We'll have to turn attention to the energy sector or starting from the energy sector really yeah well we're told that breaking down power plants are frustrating the inability or the ability of ghana gas company to supply some 650 megawatts of power enough to stop the current power crisis well, chief executive officer of the ghana gas company dr george sipayanki told joy news the company is capable of supplying 114 million standard cubic feet per day, which translates into 650 megawatts. But because the Tico and Taco plants are down, the gas wastes under the bowels of the earth. He fears the clean process gas may have to be flared while his workers look on helplessly as the economic game changer bends away. Well, Dr. George Sipayanki says uh, they are unhappy because partners along the supply chain have not been able to resolve operational challenges to enable Ghanaians to experience the full impact following the successful completion of Etuable Gas. He's worried that after all the toil and sweats by the company and the increased condemnation from Ghanaians over the delay of the project, he is disappointed that the company's production capacity is still yet to be fully utilized. In the Ashanti region, health facilities managed by members of the medical superintendent of Ghana have threatened to withdraw services to the National Health Insurance Scheme subscribers from next month. And the group says it's compelled to take the action because the National Health Insurance Authority has failed to settle its indebtedness to the health centers, which make up more than 75% of facilities in the region. The medical facilities are said to be owed more than 15 million Ghana cities accumulated for more than five months now. Mm. We'll bring you a report by our correspondent, Mohamed Nuruddin. The medical superintendent of Ghana says the long delay in the payments of the claims is affecting the successful functioning of the health facilities in the region. Drugs and non-drugs consumables, it says, have been the most affected as suppliers are unwilling to release them until they are also paid for previous supplies. Uh, our suppliers are not supplying us with both consumable, consumables and drug, drugs to operate. So, in the absence of this and the fact that no money is coming, there's no way our facilities could operate. Dr. Nanaya Omenu says the Bakwai Government Hospital, for instance, has been sued by its suppliers for non-payment, explaining that quality health care delivery is being compromised in the region. The group also wants the National Health Insurance Authority to improve the operations of its claims processing center or scrap it altogether. Well, meanwhile, the regional chairman says they have received assurances from the Ashanti Regional Director of the National Health Insurance Authority that the outstanding claims will be paid by the end of March. Uh, this latest information came out of a meeting between the two parties on Monday. Can we say, Roland, that mm. we are tired of the NHIA? They should just do what they are supposed to mm. do? But it's not necessarily because uh, it is the fault of the NHIA. The point is the receipts from the Ministry of Finance haven't been coming. In. Somebody has to take the responsibility. Sure. Is the NHIA that we know? What? I, I, yeah. I, I, I do. I, I do. Don't hold should, brief for I, them. I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not holding brief for, for the NHIA. I feel it's the Ministry of Finance, so we just have to call a spade a spade in many respects. But if you uh, owe me and your boss owes you, it is you who owe me. But I take it from you. You deal with your boss and get the money on time and give it to me. People are suffering as a result of that. No excuses. Well, on the economic front, though, the city has begun depreciating against the U.S. dollar after some months of stability. And Joy News checks at some Forex bureaus revealed... The local currency is now trading at some three cities, 44 pesos, up from three cities, 24 pesos last month. It is just two months into the year, and the city is already showing signs of weakness against other currencies, falling by about 5%. There have been reports that depreciation could be as a result of the seemingly delayed IMF program, while others contend the dollar is short in supply. This was confirmed when the news team visited some forex bureaus. We noticed there had been some adjustments in the exchange. 
It is very evident from the numerous forest bureaus I have visited today that the city is weakening against the dollar. Now, beginning of the year, one would have just needed three cities, 20 pesos to exchange uh, for the dollar. But now, you'd need more, about three cities, 44 pesos for a dollar. But forex uh, bureau managers tell me that there is so much demand for the dollar, but the supply is low. The first bureaus confirmed their clients do not receive enough dollars from the commercial banks. People are complaining because of the foreign currency, they don't get it from the bank. They will say if you go to the bank, they will give you the dollar, but then if you go, they will not give it to you out. They say they are not getting the dollars. The black market noted for hoarding foreign currencies also indicated off camera the city was falling and confirmed they did not have enough dollars to work with. Other currencies have, however, appreciated against the city, with the pound, for instance, selling at 5 cities 60 pesos and buying at 5 cities 20 pesos. Interestingly, the euro had marginally depreciated against the dollar, buying at 3 cities 80 pesos and selling at 4 cities 30 pesos. Usually, euro was four cities that was from beginning the, uh, that was somewhere last year in December but well, from January it dropped to 3.8 and now it's still dropping the development for currency analysts is due to the reduced trade between Ghana and the EU markets the euro countries used to be uh, one of our trading partners strongest trading partner but unfortunately there's been a shift though a lot of trade is done between China a lot more traders are using the dollar as an as a rate of exchange okay for the goods that they, they trade uh, they buy from these Chinese countries and then most of the businesses or investment that are in Ghana uh, coming from countries or, or, or citizens that deal more with the dollar than the euro. So you find that our trade in euro seems to be going down, you know, and it is affecting somehow, um, you know, the level of um, exchange we get from the European countries. He adds that a city will be strengthened when Ghana achieves macroeconomic stability. If to date, we still have, you know, government missing targets, revenue targets, government still having budget deficits, you know, stifling the private sector, introducing taxes and all that, you know, which does not open up, you know, businesses and operation of businesses where revenues are, could come in, where export revenue could be quite significant to the reserves that we have. You know, it, it, it will still have the problem with, um, you know, st keeping the value of the currency. There are reports, however, that a central bank significantly increased dollar supply to commercial banks at the beginning of the year to show up the city. The central bank also assured at its first monetary policy committee meeting for the year it will manage its forest policies to ensure some stability in the currency. Abigail Adamakwenchi for Joy News. Well, one thing I know, the mama we has some dollars. <laughs> uh, maybe, may, maybe, no, I changed my last hundred dollars. Maybe <laughs> I should have just held on for a while. Yeah, uh, hundred is okay. You're only <laughs> going to get uh, 20 pesos. Uh, yeah. What? Okay. 20 pesos yeah. for hundred dollars? In addition to, due to the... Oh, because the, of, the, okay, the I get yeah. you. Sorry for you. <laughs> We've got to move on, though. The Petroleum Commission says Ghana is on course with implementation of the local content law that will increase the role of indigenous players in the oil and gas sector. Twelve months after the law was passed, the commission says 80% of jobs have so far been taken up by locals. And though the target to achieve 90% local content by 2020 has been described as ambitious, the Petroleum Commission says it is not unattainable. We've got more. Mm. As in the case in many resource-rich countries, Ghana has faced challenges in ensuring the gains from its 2007 discovery of oil in the Jubilee fields translate into domestic jobs and spending. The Petroleum Regulation on Local Content and Participation was approved by Parliament last year after a lengthy debate. Effectively enforced, the law is expected to improve indigenous capacity in the hydrocarbon sector. According to the new rules, local business 
licenses will be given first preference in bids for petroleum licenses, while Ghanaian companies must have at least a 5% stake in every contract awarded to an international investor. Director in charge of special services at the Ghana Petroleum Commission, Kweku Boatin, says implementation of the law a year on has so far been smooth. The commission has ensured that all positions in the industry that we have qualified Ghanaians to occupy, the positions are reserved for Ghanaians. And that's at now over about 6,000 jobs that have been created in the industry as of December 2014. 80% of these jobs are occupied by Ghanaian professionals. In the areas of supply chain, we have ensured that since 2008, about 16 million contracts have been awarded to Ghanaian companies. And out of over the past year, out of about 300 companies registered with the Petroleum Commission to do business in the petroleum upstream sector, over 210 of these companies are indigenous Ghanaian companies doing business in the upstream sector. The government has said it is aiming to achieve 90% local participation by 2020, an ambitious target that will require significant investment in human resources and local capacity in the short and medium term. But Kweku Boatin maintains this is achievable, especially considering the strides made so far. The driver of the fuel tanker Okay, the driver of a fuel tanker died on the spot when his vehicle collided with another tanker carrying butamine at Bewazi near Apam in the central region. Well, the accident held up traffic on the Accra Cape Coast Highway for several hours. Here's our colleague Georgina Apia with this report. The coal tar tanker, which was on the highway heading towards Takradi, upon reaching Biwazi along the Apam Winneba Road, is said to have crashed into the fuel tanker, which was empty at the time, in an overtaking that went wrong. The deceased driver of the fuel tanker, a Benz truck with registration GT 526109, was a car bound. Two others who were critically injured, including a driver's mate, were sent to the Winneba Hospital. Hundreds of vehicles that were on the road at the time were caught up in serious traffic in both directions for several hours until emergency responders created a one-way to allow some traffic to flow. Checks by Joy News indicate the wreckage is yet to be completely removed from the scene of the accident as of Monday evening, even though traffic flow has now been normalized. Sources at the Central Regional Directorate of the Road Safety Commission blame this on the lack of heavy equipment to clear them. Well, meanwhile, one of the two who were critically injured is said to have died sadly. The other accident victim is, however, uh, out of danger and we wish him well, mm. definitely. And just uh, prior to that very incident over the weekend, there was also a collision uh, of a number of cars on the Akratama motorway following spilling of oil from mm. a tanker uh, within the period. So uh, we, ju we all just have to be very careful when yeah. we're driving on the road. So, so drive safe, mm. drive careful. All right. We're getting the, this very news release from the office of uh, former Minister of Finance, Yawa Safu Mafu. Uh, and the office says the attention has been drawn to an alleged tape recording of a meeting in Kofobia held on the 29th of January 2015. And at this very meeting, Yawa Safu Mafu made several remarks on the state of the Ghanaian economy, on political strategy, and also on economic and political empowerment and subsequently according to a statement some of his remarks have been distorted as advocating tribal or ethnic sentiments trying to create the impression that he's a tribalist in all his public life according to a statement he has striven uh, uh, to do what is uh, is right for ghana and not for any sectional interest and so uh, the Yawa Safu Mafo's office wished to state the following, that the alert tape purported to be his voice was doctored, mischievously rearranged and pieced together using modern technology to create a false impression. Then again, this very meeting took place on the 29th of January, but uh, coincidentally, mm -hmm. it seemed to have been released prior to or within the period of the Wongbo demonstration that was convened by the MPP within the period. Yeah. Have you listened to the tape? I have. I have listened to the tape. 
don't ask me what I think, but I think what is critical is the fact that he's not denying that it's his voice on the tape. What is he saying, though, is that it's been doctored, it's been, you know, picked pieces here and there and then joined it together. Mm -hmm. But my, where I, I, I think I have a lot of interest is, can't, you know, political parties speak to their members for it to stay private and quiet? Should somebody be always leaking these tapes? Mm. You know? It also uh, speaks volumes about the trust and confidence uh, that is just within the membership of the political parties themselves. Mm. So particularly this one, he was addressing chairman. And chairman are supposed to be the top hierarchy of uh, yeah. the party. Was there a mole the in there? Yeah, definitely. Could or could, 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 their, who was their, to be mischievous, could their opposition parties have sneaked people there you definitely know to get it there definitely. are a lot of questions to be answered <laughs> uh, but i don't know i just think that party politics must stay party politics we should leave it sometimes these hard talks they take place man yeah and they cannot go public right yeah right. but just before we go i'm, I'm on myjoyonline.com just to let you know that suspects in the nayelia metaphorical cane case they are returning to court for a continuation of their trial today also in courts uh an Accra Circuit Court would later this morning continue with a cross-examination of the Takwadi based medical practitioner, Dr. Sule Ali Gabas, accused of sodomizing a 16-year-old senior high school student. So these are court cases that we will definitely be keeping an eye on and we'll give you an update as and when we do have it. Mm, well, you've heard some of the stories. Watch them as well. Mm -hmm. And if you want to comment on them, please make sure you log on to our social network page on Facebook, Join Us on TV. And also we have a handle on Twitter, Join Us on TV. As you do that, though, I will have to uh, bring you along the lines of what the temperature as far as the weather will be like the next 24 hours. Mm. I've got a quick quiz for you, though. So Kwame Nkrumah uh, <laughs> was overthrown on this day. Uh, this day in history, but tell me where he was or where he was going when this happened. Quick, it's 6.24. By 6.30, you should give me the first answer on our Facebook page. Okay. Facebook.com forward slash join news mm. on TV. The you never is, know. Uh, we don't want to start any history. Please <laughs> get it right. Stay with us. We've got weather right after this.